How's it going, everybody? Estas here. So there's a stock out there, like you all saw in the title, that's down 50%. No joke. 50%. It's cut in half. It's been getting destroyed, and I've been getting so many questions about it. Stas, are you buying the stock, selling it, staying away from it? Should I cut my losses? What am I doing? We're going to talk about all of that in this video. So sit back, relax, hit the like button, subscribe, check out my Patreon down below, and make sure to get your 50 free bucks from m1 finance also linked down below and with that being said let's talk and no i'm not going to drag the video out wait till the end to reveal the stock that's stupid we're going to talk about the stock right now right up front and it's DraftKings ticker symbol dkng and like i said the stock's down 50%. If you guys take a look here, just a couple of months ago, back in the middle of March, about eight months ago, close to a year ago at this point, DraftKings was trading in the mid-70s. Now, fast forward, we're in the middle of November 2021, DraftKings is trading in the mid-30s. So, it's over 50% uh, of a drop at this point. Today it hit a low of 36.71, and it's down about 50.3% to be exact. So we're going to break down what's going on with DraftKings. Of course, we're going to go over some charts, technicals, as I do like to focus a lot on technical analysis in my personal investing and trading. And of course, on this channel, we break down charts every day. So let's go over some of the basics. Right now, DraftKings... DraftKings market cap is right around $15 billion, meaning at the peak, it was about $30 billion, 27, 30, something, something like that. And the trailing 12 month revenue, total revenue is right around $1.14 billion, putting the price to sales ratio at a roughly 13 right now. So since they're not profitable, their EPS is in the red, meaning they're losing money every single quarter. There's no price to earnings ratio. So the way I like the value stocks that are not making money, right? We can't look at the PE. So I like to look at the price to sales ratio. Well, that's just one thing I like to look at. And essentially all it is, is taking the market cap, which again is about 15 billion right now and dividing it by the total sales over the past 12 months, which again is around 1.14 billion, which gives us the price to sales of around 13. And just based on that, the company is not I would say richly valued and it's not really undervalued to to an extreme extent either. You know, I would say if the, if the price of sales was like a 5, that would be undervalued. Um if the price of sales was like an 100 or a 50, that would be overvalued. I mean, we see a lot of stocks these days that have ridiculous price to sales ratios. Um and I would say DraftKings it's not that ridiculous for the growth. You know, if you see a, a stock that has a huge price to sales ratio, it has to have a lot of growth to justify it, which we'll take a look at here in a second with DraftKings. But first, let's take a look at the chart. At this point in time, DraftKings is trading at a year low, I believe. Let me double check that. Um, yeah, it's trading at a year low. It just hit that today at $36.71. And I was originally looking at DraftKings to hold around $40, $41, maybe even $38, considering that was a buy zone stemming back from April of May um, to May of this year. And clearly, we didn't hold 40. Buyers did not step in there. We blew right through that support, which again is why now we're at a one year low. And if we go to the three year chart, we're noticing we're approaching those lows from about a year ago. Actually, we're almost there. I mean, $35 is where we were in the middle towards the end of October 2020. And if we break those lows, we're probably going to be going 27, uh, 28 to 30 bucks, which is where we were about a year and a half ago in June, July of 2020. And if I were to guess, I don't think we're going there. That would be ridiculously oversold. I mean, we could go there. It's not out of the cards completely. Nothing is out of the cards completely. But I don't think DraftKings is going to go to 27, 30 bucks. If it were to go there, 
I would buy a lot more shares, to be completely honest with you guys. And full disclosure, I already own a pretty uh, good amount of DraftKings right now. My average is right around 45. So I'm already down a good chunk on DraftKings. And I'm looking to average down, guys, but I'm not doing it quite yet. I'm looking to average down, but not quite yet. I'm giving it some time. And we'll talk about that in a second. Quite honestly, um, I think it's just too oversold right now, and I'm waiting to see where it kind of finds support and bottoms out at before I even add more money to it. So at this point, we're getting to the lows of a year, year and a half ago, and I'm seeing it trading within a wedge on this three-year chart. You guys can see it, what I just drew out literally right now, and uh, we'll see what direction we end up picking at this point in time. So with that being said, now that we're getting destroyed, we're down a good chunk, we're down 45% even in the past, um, you know, just two, two and a half months alone. Let's take a look at some uh, numbers. Let me just pop up my Safari tab really quickly and go over a little bit more why the stock could be dropping. So this is what we're seeing here on Yahoo Finance, right? 15 bill market cap. Like I said, the beta is 1.9. So it's way more volatile than the markets. They're losing $3.62 EPS trailing 12 months. Like I said, this company is not profitable. And if we, <clears throat> if we pop up, <clears throat> geez, guys, voice crack. Let me take a sip of my coffee real quick. If we pop up the financials, you're going to see this company is growing a lot. Like I mentioned earlier, if there is a high price to sales ratio, which is not ridiculous, ridiculously high at 13, but if it's if it's higher than like a, a two, three, four, right, that means there is growth for the company. It's 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 uh, more richly valued because you're paying for that growth. And in this case, you're paying for the growth, guys. Look at the top line right here. They did 191 million revenue in 2017, 226 million in 2018. They did 323 million in 2019. So they were growing a good, good chunk those couple of years. Nothing too crazy though. And then once the pandemic hit, they doubled their revenue. In 2020, they did uh, 614 million, which doubled up pretty much from 323 million in the year before. And now, trailing 12 months, they're at 1.14 billion. So they doubled up again, which is just showing the growth in this particular industry the gambling, the betting, sports betting, that whole entire industry, which gets me into point number two. The rising competition. This is another reason why I believe um, DraftKings is getting uh, it's getting beaten down a bit. But I don't think it's over for DraftKings, considering, in my opinion, they have a very good brand name. We have a lot of competition, guys. Though, despite the great brand name DraftKings has, we have FanDuel, Bet Rivers, Bet MGM, Barstool Sportsbook. Points Bet, Caesar Sportsbook, Fox Bet, Sugar House. I've even seen Win, Win Bet, I think it's what it's called. So a lot of these major casinos are now branching off to online platforms and they're competing with DraftKings. And that's a real threat to the company. But again, I think with the strong growth they have, the strong brand name, DraftKings is going to be a, a top two, three player, if not the top player in the the space. And if we take a look here, legal sports betting in the US, it's still growing. I mean, look, it's not even live in a lot of the countries yet. If you guys look at this map, you know, the green states are where DraftKings Mobile is live. The gray states are where Draft DraftKings is not live. The black states are dark gray, whatever you want to call it. These states are not legal. We're talking Texas, we're talking Florida. A bunch of these states, right? California, Hawaii, um, Alaska, right? Or is Alaska even here? I might sound like an idiot for saying that, but I don't think it's here. But anyway, a lot of these states, they're not even legal yet. Not even legal yet. So that means there's a lot more growth on the horizon, as I do believe a lot of these states will become legalized over the next couple of years. And the red states here are legal, but DraftKings retail only so it's not you know fully operating in louisiana in new york right so that is that, that that's real you know a lot of competition but there's a lot of future growth as well as these states are going to begin legalizing and another big reason why 
which I don't know if you guys are realizing this, but it's probably the Fed, you know, interest rates potentially rising very soon here, the tapering, which we've talked about that hurts companies that are growing, right? That hurts companies where their growth is projected into the future, right? Companies on the flip side that have earnings today that have revenues or not really revenues, but um, earnings today, they're making money today, interest rates rising, the tapering is not really going to hurt them. But if a lot of this stuff's projected in the future, interest rates rising, tapering, it's going to hurt companies that have high multiples, that are growing a lot. It's just the name of the game, right? Because the interest rate increasing is increasing the discount rate, which is used in valuation models to determine the future of businesses and their growth potential. And it's hurting companies that have high multiples, the companies that have high valuations, which is what DraftKings did at one point, $75. That was a pretty overvalued price, in my opinion. Now that we're at 36, not so overvalued, um, but still, interest rates, the tapering, the Fed policies, it, it's probably having a bit of some weight on um, DraftKings stock. So overall, guys, I'm long DraftKings. You know, I'm holding on to it. I bought more recently, and I'm looking to buy more here in the 30s at some point in time, but I'm not pulling the trigger quite yet. Uh, but I'm definitely looking to buy more, and that's kind of a quick breakdown of DraftKings. And I'm not telling you guys what to do, but if I was in it, which I am in it, um, and I'm panicking right now, which I'm not panicking, but I, I've gotten DMs of people panicking, like, what should I do, what should I do, what should I do? You know, I wouldn't really panic. I mean, especially if you're looking to hold for a decent amount of time, which I am for sure at this point. I'm selling covered calls on it. I'm making money, income while I'm holding on to the stock. I wouldn't panic, guys, truthfully. I just wouldn't. Um, I think DraftKings is a great pick. I think it's going to be a winner, and uh, we just have to be patient with it. You know, not every every uh, month, every week, we're going to be seeing breakout after breakout after breakout. There's going to be periods where the stock just gets clobbered, and that's what we're living through right now. So if you guys found value, make sure to hit the like button, subscribe, drop me a comment, let me know your thoughts, and check out my Patreon if you want all my real-time moves in the markets, options, trades, long-term investments. If you want morning videos every day and more access to me, I'm putting in so much work into the Patreon. All of that's linked down below, or you guys can go to stasurfest.com slash Patreon. Make sure to also get your 50 bucks from M1 and your two stocks from Weeble. Those are linked down below as well. And with that being said, I'll catch you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching. As always, keep crushing the market. Stay safe out there. Peace out.